Welcome, everyone. I'm Corey. I'm the lead pastor of Summerside Baptist Church, and this is our Good Friday service. Welcome. So good to have you here. Today, we're here to focus on Jesus, and uh, there's a beautiful passage in the Old Testament that long before Jesus was actually born and that he died for us, spoke so clearly about his death. It's from Isaiah chapter 53. It says of Jesus, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Let's pray together. God, we come with mixed feelings today, knowing that you carried such a heavy burden on that day where you died for us. God, it weighs our hearts to know that you bled for us, that you suffered for us, you were ridiculed for us. You bore the weight of sin and shame and darkness for us, God. It makes our hearts heavy. But God, at the same time, we can't help but be grateful to, to stand here in awe, to think that you did that for us, that each of us, listening today, watching today, can say with complete conviction, you did that, Jesus, for me. God, I thank you that you won our freedom, that you set us free, that you paid for it all on the cross. And so we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. So where you are, uh, standing or seating, could you join with us as we worship together?
washed it white as snow. Treasure. 
Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start over. Yeah. Okay. Your thumbs up means you're so, yeah, don't say anything, and then when he puts the thumbs up, then you can start oh, whenever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be here at Summerside Baptist Church on, for Good Friday. We've done this mi for many years. It's a little different now. We're doing it in the virtual world today because of the social distancing and the coronavirus that is going on. But I, I'm trusting everybody is safe and well, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here today. And my name is Pastor Steve from Belmont United Baptist, and I have a prayer and some scripture and, uh, and, and I'll be doing the communion a little later, but let us all just take this moment to bow our heads for the opening prayer. Our Father in heaven, on this humble day that we gather to show our gratitude for your willing sacrifice that Jesus made at Calvary, Lord, we lift up all our praise and glory to you. Lord, we recognize that your power is so great that it can overcome death and the power of sin, and as such, we now serve the living Lord. And for this, we are forever thankful. Father, please help us to always live our lives so that our very lives show the world that you can overcome every obstacle that we may face each day. Father, today, even more so than any other day of the year, we stand as a unified body of believers, although in the virtual world, that struggles to grasp at the grace that you extend to us via the cross and the sacrifice your Son willingly made for us. Father, we, Father, help us to be the, to be aware daily of Jesus' suffering for us, we the undeserving. Please help us as we experience your grace to see the world from a perspective of serving and bringing, and bringing all glory to you. Father, we know so little of your vast, you know, of your vastness and greatness, but we do know that you love us to such an extent that you have reached out to us with your gentle hand of mercy. And like the psalmist says in the 18th Psalm, my favorite psalm, you have drawn us out of many waters and have delivered us from our strong enemies. Father, this mercy shown to us, we humble ourselves before you. We will always struggle for the right words to fully express and describe our humble, our, our humble thanks to you. But as we bow our heads today, Please know that you are first and foremost in our hearts. Today we invite the Holy Spirit to fill whatever place we may find ourselves in, in the virtual world and at home and here, to overflowing and to mold our hearts so that your words become part of our very being. Father, the horror and the pain endured by Jesus Christ that fateful day so many years ago is something we should never forget and should never take for granted. Father, today we ask for your blessing to be upon all that are gathered here and in the virtual world today and that have joined us through the, through the Internet. And as we focus on your words today, we give all glory and praise to you. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Today's scripture passage is taken out of Matthew's, Matthew's Gospel, 27, verses 45 to 56, and I'll be reading out of the NIV version. From noon until, until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shabaka lani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtains of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of the many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. 
Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. May God's blessing be upon this very powerful passage today. Amen. And good morning from me. I'm Pastor Chuck from Bedeck Baptist Church, and uh, we're part of this strange gathering of, uh, for Good Friday uh, to follow in the tradition that has been ours uh, with the three churches in the area and uh, to come together in strange times in, in every way possible because of the limitations that we're currently working with. You heard the scripture that Steve read a little earlier from Matthew. And uh, in the middle of the passage, it said, Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. What did he cry out? I'd, I'd like us to hear the words from John. John tells us what it is that Jesus cried out. John 19, 28 tells us, knowing that everything has now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of a hyssop plant, lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. He bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. It is finished. That's the focus I want to bring uh, to us today uh, to consider what that means, how the first people who heard it interpreted it is finished anyone who's read tom wright's book the day the revolution began will know that i got some of this from him uh, it uh, was a book i read not that long ago and knew this is what i wanted to do uh, what i wanted to relate on good friday the good that is in good friday that between 3 p.m and 6 p.m on that friday the universe was altered everything changed in an instant as Christ died on the cross. The whole universe somehow just altered, shifted, not just the physical universe, but the spiritual universe as well. Uh, a totally new relationship between heaven and earth because of Christ's death. Yes, Sunday we'll talk about his resurrection, but it is his death that again and again and again the, the first responders to the gospel focused on. So I want us to look at what that means. What happened as God's plan that had always been there came into fulfillment. From a spiritual perspective, I, I try and describe it this way. And if you've, you've been in my church, you've heard me talk about this before. That in that instant, forgiveness for sin ran backwards. It rippled backwards in time to the very beginning of time. So that Abraham, who never knew Jesus of Nazareth, knew that God saves. And in his faith, what Jesus did there on the cross applied to Abraham. And it echoed forward into my history. So that on February the 8th, 1976... Chuck McGuire was forgiven for his sins and others and again and again until that day when Christ returns. The universe changed. Paul talks about it this way. He says, I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons, neither the past, the present, the future, the powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. How can Paul say that? That none of these things, and, and including me, <laughs> I'm, I'm lumped in there, my own self. I, I can't, God's going to love endlessly. God's going to love forever. God is, none of these things can separate me from the love of God. How can Paul say that? Because Jesus said, it is finished. To the church, uh, the Colossian church, he says, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. How can Paul know that? How can Paul claim that and, and proclaim that to the world that, that 
God is taking us out of darkness and bringing us into light. That we are new kingdom people now that we weren't before. How can Paul so boldly tell people that? Because Jesus said, it is finished. In Romans chapter 6, he said, for we know... That our old self was crucified with him. So that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we will no longer be slaves to sin. And to the Corinthian church he adds. The death. Death has been swallowed up in what Christ did in that moment. Sin and death no longer confine me. They don't confine you. It's a new world. It's a new way of being. It's a new way of living. And how can he boldly say that? Because Jesus said, it is finished. Peter, as he stands up to address the crowd at Pentecost, 50 days, 53 days, I guess it would be, after the crucifixion. And he addresses this crowd, some of which would have returned to this festival of Pentecost, who were there at Passover, who were there and stood in the crowd and cried, crucify him, crucify him. Peter stands up before them and says, all Israel is to be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God calls. Wow, how can, here's Peter, the denier. Now he's saying, it's all changed. Not, not only has God forgiven you, not only has God declared you to be in a different kingdom than you were before, but he's going to go and be present with you through the Holy Spirit. He's going to enter into you. He's going to enter into us as congregations and as church. How? <laughs> How can Peter dare to proclaim that the Holy One, the creator of the universe, the one who knows no sin is going to enter into human life as Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, it is finished. We've heard Paul, we've heard Peter, let's add John into the mix. 1 John 3, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Boy, are we talking about present time. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. How dare John say that someone as selfish as me, particularly as, as selfish as I was 45 years ago before I knew Christ as my Lord and Savior, how can, how can he be in agreement with Paul who persecuted the church? I mean, yeah, sure, everybody that likes doing good things. Everybody likes to get involved in something good. But somewhere in the back of your mind, there's this little voice that says, and what's in it for me? And to have that eradicated, that that's not, no longer the foundation, that I can actually love somebody else without needing anything in return. Because that was Christ's example. How can John risk putting that out there? That we selfish human beings could somehow love, not just God, but could love each other. Could love the members of that family we were born to that we didn't have a choice in becoming a part of. And maybe it's the same with church. We, you may not have chosen who's sitting in church with you when you sit in church. But they can be loved by you for no other reason than they are loved by God. Because Jesus said it's finished. I want to go back to Peter for just a minute. In his second letter, he says what, is, as Steve mentioned earlier, one of his favorite parts of the Bible. This is one of my favorites. God's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his goodness and grace. Through these, he has given us his great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Now, there's a bold statement. 
that I can participate in God's divine nature, that somehow something has happened in the universe that I can be rolled into and become a part of, that I can have that, that I have been given everything that I need to be who I was created to be. As my friend Dave likes to say, so I can be who I is. How can Peter say that? That everything is available. Well, because Jesus said, it is finished. Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 5, he talks about new creation. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The universe shifted. The universe has changed. Create, there's something new has been created that we get to be a part of. That happened in that instant when Jesus Christ in selfless obedience to the Father said, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. That's the good in Good Friday. God bless you. Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to have our communion now, a little different than we usually have it. Usually we have a, a large group of people and, and the deacons, but um, uh, this is a different time, and we're going to do it through a, a virtual. So I'll just have a little pause here so you can go get some elements, uh, some juice and some bread, and then we'll uh, come back and proceed with the communion. Our Lord's Supper. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who have love and concern for your neighbors, who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God by walking in holy ways, draw near with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving to whatever table you are around at the moment for, as we partake in the supper of the Lord to your comforts. Come to the table, not because you must, but because you May come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you are sincerely that you sincerely love our Lord Christ and desire to be his true disciples. And now that the Lord and, and now that the supper of the Lord is is spread before us, and today we have uh, some bread and, and and some juice here. Lift up your mind and heart above all selfish fears and care. Let the let the bread and the wine be to you the witness and the sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have come together today via the, the internet and the virtual world in obedience to our Lord's command to share in the Lord's Supper, to his blessing and fellowship, all disciples of the Lord Jesus who have confessed him before people and wish to serve him may come. This is not an exclusive uh, Baptist table. If you know the Lord, join us wherever you are. This is the table of the Lord, and if you are his disciples, you are more than welcome to join us today, and I invite you to. We're going to have the institution of the, of the bread, this, which represents his broken body. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he is betrayed, took a loaf of bread, I don't know what it was like this, but he took a loaf of bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray now. Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper, um, to break bread and, 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 and to share in, 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 the, in, in, the, in, in the wine, to remember what happened, Lord, but your broken body was on that cross. It endured so much pain and suffering. You allowed it to happen so that we could have that re restored relationship with you. Lord, help us to never take that for granted. Lord, help us to always live people that are very grateful and humble and understand the love you extended to us so that we extend it to others around us. 
Lord Father. Let us eat this bread, everybody, and let us, in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray, everybody. Gracious God, Father, we are about to partake in the cup, and which is his rep represents Christ's blood. And I often think about that crucifixion scene where his blood dripped to the ground, Lord, and the agony he went through, and we cannot imagine. It is beyond our comprehension, but he bore it all for us, Lord. His blood dripped. Never take that for granted. Never never dismiss it the power of it and lord we just again are very thankful that you have loved us so much that you came and walked among us your broken creations and helped oh, find a way help us to become re restored when we get to to when you come to live in our hearts jesus said this is the blood of my covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins drink in remembrance of that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. And that uh, concludes our communion. <laughs> love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how Why should 
should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Well, folks, we're very glad that you are with us for our Good Friday celebration, and we look forward with great joy to Easter Sunday. Uh, God bless you. God bless your families. And let's end in a brief word of prayer. Lord, as Chuck said, everything changed because of what you did. You get all the credit. You get all the glory. And Father, would you use us, your people? to bring not only you glory, but would you work through us to bring many more to salvation? We ask this in your name. Amen.